Thank you, Guru Bigwa. So we acknowledge the Bangla people, the traditional owners of the land we meet on today, and their continuing connection to the land, sea, culture, and community. We pay our respects to elders past, present, and emerging, and we extend that respect to other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people within our community. The City of Port Lincoln acknowledges and respects the diversity of cultural heritage and beliefs within our community. As a council, we are committed to serving the best interests and needs of all people in our city, and we endeavour to discharge our duties conscientiously and to the best of our ability. Thanks very much. Please be seated. Welcome to elected members, staff, and members of the gallery and staff, and sorry, press as well. For information tonight, we have present Councillor Broadfoot, Councillor Rousselm, Councillor Lynn, Councillor Jolly, Councillor Davis, Councillor Staunton. We have apologies tonight from Councillor, sorry, Deputy Mayor Ritchie, <coughs> Councillor Lynn Davies, and Councillor Jeff Dodd. So item three is a declaration of conflicts of interest. Is there any conflicts of interest that people wish to declare tonight, please? None declared, thank you very much. So item four is the purpose of the meeting. The purpose of the special council meeting is to hear verbal submissions on the foreshore redevelopment project. A consultation period, have your say, Port Lincoln, has been run from Monday the 31st of May to Friday the 11th of June, 2021. Item five is the verbal submissions for the foreshore development project. Item 5.1 is community consultation foreshore redevelopment project. Verbal submissions with regard to the foreshore redevelopment project will be heard by registered persons as part of the consultation process. Each person providing a verbal submission will be allocated up to 10 minutes to speak. If a written copy of the verbal submission is provided, it will be treated as a written submission and provided to council as part of the final consultation report. Thank you very much. So I understand we have one uh, presentation tonight. Ms. Mislov, if you'd like to come up, Diana, and uh, make the presentation. Thanks, I'll limit it to 10 minutes plus questions after. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Brad. Um, Good evening, councillors, my staff, and press and the gallery. Um, and you must get sick of seeing me, but I'm glad I'm here because maybe I'm the only one. I'm not sure, but we'll see. And I just can't lie in bed at night without knowing I've done all I can to represent the community as best I can. So, and that's the people that we all meet every day, wandering around in the streets, the post office, wherever. Um, so, firstly, I'd like to. Uh, Thank uh, the council for providing the community with a couple of options and um, using your say to gather that information and going back and having a look at those um, plans and drawings and giving, giving another opportunity for consultation. Um, a comment on the your say consultation page. It was taxing for people to complete the registration and then come back and complete a closed a response survey. Many people abandoned that process. And this meant some people were taking the time to email council, creating more work to compile any meaningful data. To be unable to select none of the above or skip a question, excuse the results. Um, and this is because your instructions to staff were to choose one of two options for two components of the project. And I think if you really want good feedback, the process should be simpler. The public drop-in sessions were not always available to the public uh, when it was closed for school excursions but I applaud the council for using former air travel for this purpose and know that there were some good attendances. So that's really great. Only one councillor, Linda Davies, um, has attended any of the Port Lincoln Community Action Group meetings. No, no she's not here this evening. Um, but the one she attended was not an open meeting, uh, but one where the executive were elected. And it was great that she came and heard firsthand some of the concerns of ratepayers and sat through some of the more boring formalities. Councillor Davies is a local like me and a few of you here too. I appreciate council listening to those that have grown up here as most of us have seen it all. Local knowledge is important. Locals have seen the fountains, water slides, buildings, playgrounds and more on the foreshore in the past and know the climatic conditions 
And there are reasons why these things haven't worked on our foreshore. And one of the most important values our ratepayers have is that wide green open space. In the past, sand has had to be removed from the grass foreshore area due to build up over time. And just imagine what that will do to the maintenance and life of water play and in-ground trampolines. The public have been signing petitions in alignment with the top five priorities for the foreshore. And to date, we have over a thousand signatures. We will keep going, increasing that number and deliver these when appropriate, having checked them for any errors or duplications. Businesses are calling me and some members of the Port Lincoln Community Action Group to have these petitions in their premises at another call today. I can almost hear you thinking, that's not many. And that figure might not seem representative of Port Lincoln's population. But only four, over 4,000 people voted in the last elections and the lowest vote that a councillor received to lead you to this table making decisions on our future was 302, with the most being 614. For me, it puts the number of signatures into some perspective that way. The message on the petition is simple. Keep the existing car parking along Tasman Hills <coughs> CBD. Repair and retain the existing children's playground. No viewing platform, boardwalk or tiered seating. Repair the seawall and don't extend the jetty. When I inquired at the drop-in session who the target audience for the foreshore redevelopment is, the answer was everyone. Yet the design and infrastructure won't be for or suit everyone. Doesn't suit me or the other over a thousand people signing the petition. The playground audit should identify where resources <laughs> should be best spent, updating, beautifying, making compliant, current and relevant our existing playgrounds <laughs> and maybe even Puckridge Park where approved concept plans also include a viewing platform, playground and water play. The jetty engineering is still coming and the costs may be so large that council will be better off reconsidering the whole site. Peter Davis's plans may be the answer. Wyler has certainly used some of what he has recommended. Business cases for the various components of the project, the seasonal cafe, marketplace, charter operators, are yet to be seen by the councillors or the public, including the operational expenditure and renewal, noting the renewal required by other installations of similar playground equipment, including shade, softball and degrading materials. Council has said there was a misconception <coughs> that rates would rise as a result of the foreshore redevelopment. And that might be true if limited other projects were undertaken. But rates will have to rise to keep other programs and goals being met. So the foreshore redevelopment does have an impact on rates and well into the future with growing debt and operational expenditure. When council considers the feedback from this round of consultation, could you also consider holding any further planning until all the reports, business cases, budgets and costings are in, rather than consider these components like the playground in isolation. The public is suffering from consultation fatigue, so I can only imagine what it's doing to you. The 2018 consultation processes was long and resulted in the Jensen Plus plan that was ultimately scrapped by council in favour of this rushed congested plan. Why could not single elements of the Jensen Plus plan be funded? For example, the Reconciliation Plaza and the Pancala Trail upgrade from the Lewis Street end and further seawall repairs. Could you consider an approach like the Sajuna Council, who recently opened their foreshore playground, by forming a committee which included councillors, service groups, the Sajuna Hotel and community representatives to further any planning? That way, as part of a consultation, you empower community to make decisions. Part of the funding was for marina elements, but the community haven't seen what they are, and I wonder if that's still going ahead. Elevations of the youth activation space or the old children's playground are not available. And I asked how high the bouldering wall would be, and there were references to mini scale activities. Will that really meet the expectation of our youth using that area? I don't think so. I think it'll only be a matter of time before they require an extension or move their activities onto other areas, perhaps unsuitable like the business premises along Tasman Terrace. The Community Action Group wrote over three pages of questions from their first meeting and haven't had a response to any of them. Many ratepayers and individuals contributed to consultation first time around and will have done so again. 
Many would have asked questions. These will probably also go unanswered. Please, councillors, if you can't answer those questions, maybe you don't have all the information to make those decisions just yet. That's all I've got. Thank you. If there's any questions, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, Brad, if I may, just one thing I wanted to uh, to query was this concept that the centre was closed while school children groups were in there. Um, I have heard that several times in the last few days. I'm not aware that we closed a lot of people out by the school groups in there. So if, if there are particular individuals who feel that they've been aggrieved or locked out of the centre, I would encourage them to uh, come and contact us because none of the staff who um, worked in the drop-in centre are aware that anyone was turned away or locked out. Just want to make that clear. Okay. And certainly the the times that we were there with school groups, we actually had been <coughs> working through the presentations with the school groups. And uh, one lady actually commented to me after a presentation from the school group that it was great to see the kids asking questions. And they actually asked a lot of the questions that she had. So this notion that we've got people out of the drop-in centre, I think, just needs to be clarified. So again, I would invite anyone who feels they've been locked out to come and contact us and we can discuss that. Thanks, Mayor Brad. Thanks very much, Matt. Is there anyone else that would like to make a presentation tonight? No? Okay. So, therefore, the recommendation is that verbal submissions on the foreshore redevelopment project be received. Can I have a mover, please? Councillor Jolly, do you want to speak on that? Can I have a second, please? Councillor Davis, do you want to speak on that? Okay. Is there any? Discussion or statements for and against? Any questions, clarification? No, I'll put the motion then. All those in favour? Motion carried. Thank you very much. Item six, there are no reports. Item seven, there are no confidential reports. And item 10, the meeting is now formally closed. Thank you very much for your attendance and your participation, all of you are involved.